You have to have your own walk with God mm -hmm. and your own experience with God. Mm -hmm. And the more you go through things and you see that God is faithful, the less you have to worry the next time yeah. about what's going to happen. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure. And a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Today is a celebration, so come on in here for Joyce's birthday party. Yay! It's my birthday. Yay! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> we threatened Fine. that we were going to sing. I finally but... made it to 30. Isn't that yeah. wonderful? <laughs> you look great. You look so you good. You do. <laughs> I guess you didn't want our song. I know. I'm shocked. Oh, you can sing. Go ahead. Are you ready? I want you to She said no. <laughs> no, I don't Time actually want to. Happy birthday to... Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> that was very Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. 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 Then, I felt then that spear fingers. Then, yeah, yeah jazz hands. Yeah. Yeah. Joyce, is there that really I wasn't like it. too bad. It wasn't Thank bad you. at all. Yeah. Yeah. You did good. Joyce Meyer said I could sing now. Did you hear that just now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, said she, she doesn't sing, have her she hearing aid in. <laughs> she said not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> well, this is a big birthday for you. Yeah. 80. It's amazing. I'm an octogenarian. It is amazing. Octogenarian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that underneath your name. Yeah. Joyce Meyer, octogenarian. I never heard that depressive. word until I got it. Join the club. I so do not feel like I'm 80. You don't I look it either. No. You don't, don't act mm. in, like at Well, all. I don't really feel it. You know, and we, I wrote that book called, what I call it? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a little problem with my memory now. <laughs> yeah. Aging without getting old. Aging, Aging without, without getting, getting old. old. Yeah. Yeah. And how age really is just a number, but old is a mindset. Ooh, it's yeah. like, and so I just, because I don't think I'm 80. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I am, but I don't. I don't go around thinking like that, mm -hmm. and I still am so active, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty funny. I went in a, a dress shop and when I was in Florida recently, and I came out there, and I said, well, everything in there is for old people. <laughs> and then I, I came so out, and I thought, oh, I guess 21. that meant it was for me. <laughs> I didn't care for it much, so. Well, I think there is so much that, we can all learn, actually. Yeah. So we just all want to ask you a bunch of questions okay. today. You know, just figuring out what this aging process <laughs> can be. Yeah. And so I, I think it's great to start with you talking about looking back on the goodness of God and yeah. what He's done through your mm -hmm. life and how important that is for all of us at whatever age we are. And so let's start with that and hear what Joyce has to say, and then we'll come back and talk more about it. From where I started, let's go back to the little girl whose first memory was being afraid of her father through all the abuse. And there's, there's a whole lot more to that story, things I could tell you that would just turn your stomach that I won't bother telling you. My daughter said to me not too long ago, she said, you know, it is amazing what a good parent you were considering how you were raised. So don't ever be afraid, don't ever be afraid that you can't be a good parent because God will anoint you to be whatever he calls you to be. And the anointing is what qualifies you. Jesus was qualified, he said, his anointing hath qualified me. And God has been faithful to me, he's been good to me. He has given me back 10 times over anything that I lost. He's given me honor. He's rewarded me. He's blessed me. And I have to tell you that I can't say 
that I'm sorry about what happened to me because what I once thought was my worst enemy has become my best friend. Amen. And I'm going to stand up to finish this. Ew. It's pretty amazing that I'm 80 and still at it, huh? And you know what? I don't have any plans to be anywhere but right here. I might get a little stiffer, but I'll be on that TV Monday morning to greet you and bring you another word from God. I am committed to teaching the Word of God, and I am qualified to teach the Word of God because I have got experience. And I can tell you that God is faithful and God is good, and you can press through anything that comes against you because the greater one lives in you. Come on, get up and give God a big praise. What a great encouragement for, for anyone of any age, yeah. but especially as we are looking at growing older and what God is doing in our lives and wants to do yet. And what I love, Joyce, about you is I, it's so um, important for all of us to hear, you know, you're not planning on stopping soon. Nope. That, you know, that's a commitment. That, I think the first thing I really have in my heart to share with people, I feel like there's a lot of people watching today that just... They're too caught up in the number mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. of their age. Sure. Yeah. And they're assuming that, well, because I'm 72 or 75 or 65 or whatever, I, ca I can't do that. But the truth is, is you're never too young and you're never mm -hmm. too old to do what God tells you to do. Yeah. And the main thing that God wants us to do is to be a blessing to each other and to help each other. You know, I help through teaching the Word of God and lots of other things that I do personally. But um, Dick Van Dyke, who's in his late 90s, I heard him say that there's two things you have to have when you get old if you want to be happy, and that's a purpose mm -hmm. and somebody to love. Mm -hmm. that's good. And I like that. Yeah. And I think that people are making a big mistake if they lose their purpose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as what I've learned, I mean, what haven't I learned? <laughs> like, I, I said earlier, I've learned how to be a human being, for one thing. <laughs> and uh, when I think about where I started, just everything that's happened over the, mm -hmm. the years, you know, years go by fast. Yeah. I mean, they, the amount of years that we live is just nothing compared to eternity. Mm -hmm. And I know when you're 20, you think you've got forever, but you'll be 40 before you know it, and then you'll be 50, and then 60, and it's, 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 really, it's really wise to make good use of your time. Yeah. But what is it says in Psalms, help number my days, you know, that I walk in wisdom. I'm, I'm not quoting it accurately, but he's, he's really talking about you know, thinking about what you're doing and what yeah. you're spending yeah. your time doing and not wasting your time because yeah. you don't, none of us have as much time as we think we do. But I mean, God has healed me from so many things and taught me so many things. And I've got four wonderful children and 12 grandchildren and sixth great grandchild <laughs> going to be born here in just a hmm. couple weeks. And <laughs> it's... um God's blessed me. Yeah. yeah. Really blessed me. I, I think of the scripture as you're talking. This isn't the one you're talking about, but I love this scripture. It says, it's Psalm 27, 4. It says, One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. And yeah. it, it's all the days. It's not like, yeah. you know, I'm going to do this while I'm in the prime of my life, yeah, and then I'm going to exactly. take it easy right. and, yeah. and not not think about that anymore. It just mm -hmm. God always has something for us to do, and He right. always has beauty for us in our life. Right. You know, I don't... I don't think that retiring is wrong. So when I say this, anybody who is retired or is going to retire, I'm not saying that you're doing the wrong thing. But I can't, I can't think like that. People say to me, do you plan to retire? I don't, 
I don't know what I'd do with myself if I did. <laughs> you know, I've done the same thing for so many years. It's okay. like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is my life. You know, it's like Paul said, for me to live is Christ. I wouldn't, mm. Yeah. you know, I enjoy what I do, and I feel like I'm still helping people, and so I don't, uh, I don't plan to quit. I said one time, and my kids corrected me. I said, I wouldn't mind at all to die preaching. <laughs> and they were just like, don't say that. <laughs> If you fell over dead in the pulpit, we'd all have a fit. Nobody wants that. <laughs> but I thought that'd be a great way to go. Yeah, I appreciate the dedication. Yeah. Just make sure you're at the end because you don't want to yeah. leave us yeah. hanging. Right. Right. Literally, <laughs> what happens at the end? Yeah. What what was what was the rest of that message? <laughs> but um, I've learned. I've been talking a lot lately about experience mm. and how. You only can get experience by going through things. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not something that can you can just pray for or right. somebody can give you as a gift in a box. You have mm -hmm. to you have to have your own walk with God mm -hmm. and your own experience with God. Mm -hmm. And the more you go through things and you see that God is faithful, the less you have to worry the next time yeah. right. about what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get 40, 45 years behind you in a relationship with God, things get so much easier because really trusting God is the key to everything in life. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so much bad stuff going on right now in the world, and mm -hmm. that's all anybody wants to talk about is how bad it is and all the negativity, and it's hopeless. And But God is still God, you know, and He still is going to take care of his people and do what needs to be done. And we're, we're the ones that need to stay positive mm -hmm. and hopeful. And I love what it says in Peter. It says we're born again into an ever-living hope. Yeah. No matter how bad situations are in the world, we always have hope. But you can't, you don't, you just, you can't have that kind of faith without going through things, hard things, mm -hmm. and seeing the faithfulness of God. And I think the other thing that happens as you get older is you learn what's important and what's not. Yeah. I've had several people say to me recently, you know, now that I've gotten a little bit older, I realize what a waste of time it was to get mad about that mm -hmm. or yeah. what a, how foolish it was to get upset over that thing. Mm -hmm. And you, you get a lot more peaceful. Yeah as you get older mm -hmm. because you realize that so many things are petty compared to eternity <laughs> and how much time we waste yeah. being upset over things we can't do anything about. You know what, though? That's really a choice mm -hmm. to do that because yeah. there are also many people who get more fearful as they get right. older yeah. 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 because, yeah. you know, their body's changing and they don't know what the future mm -hmm. might hold. Yeah. And, and so I think what you're saying, making that choice— that is, it's really a great encouragement because it's going to go one way or the other, yeah. right? But having that experience does eliminate that. Yeah, but how? Because how, I was thinking the same thing. Like you, you somewhere along the line, did you decide this is how I will look at my past experiences and see God in them, or because you could easily think that was so terrible. I've been through so many terrible things. More terrible things could happen. Well, I started yeah. out like that. Yeah. I mean, my attitude was Dave and I were married a few weeks, and he looked at me and said, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. And uh, he forgot that he prayed for somebody that needed help. He asked for yeah. it. When he wanted to get married. So he got exactly. <laughs> he asked for it. Was it was his own he, asking. He, he, yeah, that's what God I tell you. He answered prayers. <laughs> he asked for this. Uh, and uh, he said, what's wrong with you? I, I was just being negative about something. He said, why are you so negative? I'll never forget what I said to him. I said, it, well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you won't be disappointed mm. when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how negative I was. Wow. Mm -hmm. I had had so many disappointing things in my life that I did fall into that trap you're talking about, yeah. about just having what the Bible calls evil forebodings in Proverbs 15, 15, that all of our days are made unhappy and miserable through evil forebodings, so expecting yeah. something bad. But the Bible tells us to wait on God and put our hope in God. And if you study out the word wait on God, it actually means 
to expect something good to happen yeah. mm-hmm. at any moment. So you, you start out in life, at least I did, and I think most of you will say this, trying to solve my own problems. Yeah. You know, I said I trusted God. But I always wanted to have a backup plan. Plan B. And, uh, I mean, I was very much like Abraham and Sarah. You know, this is taking too long, yeah. and so I've got mm-hmm. a good idea. Why don't you do this? And then I'd go do that, and that would be a mess and wouldn't work out. And uh, there's a scripture in Jeremiah that says, "My people have committed two evils. They've dug for themselves wells that have no water in it, mm-hmm. and they've gone way too many days without." seeking me. And I love that digging wells that have no water in them. It's like you work and work and work yeah. at something, and then it's like, well, this yeah, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you either will, it is a choice, because you either will drive yourself totally mm-hmm. insane mm-hmm. and just be worn out and miserable all the time trying to do things yourself. And most of us do reach a point where we just say, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like that surrender point, I think, yeah. where you finally just... Whatever. It's yours. But yeah, yeah it's, it's God's. Yeah. People, people reach it in different ways, mm-hmm. but we, we try to be a good Christian on our own, mm-hmm. and you can't without God's help. Right. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Yeah. So... You know, I preach and I tell people how it can be, but I don't think that eliminates them going through <laughs> right, yeah, through things mm-hmm. because the only way you're going to get that experience is to go through it, mm-hmm. yeah, for yourself. Well, and you're certainly still going through it. I mean, well, sure. I, I I love talking to Joyce about different things that are happening in her life because you you just have. a a good attitude about Mm -hmm. most of it. Like she, is it okay if I share about your hearing aid? Yeah. She, she recently (laughs) got a hearing aid. I guess it is okay. I don't know. What are you going to say? (laughs) Yeah. She, she she recently, (laughs) she recently got a hearing aid and she called. Dave got two. (laughs) Okay. Because you only got one. one. Uh Therefore we know whose hearing is worse. (laughs) Yes. She called and she said, I, I can hear everything. She said, I can hear my hair sizzle when I curl my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's just adjusting to new things in life. You can either be really upset about those kind of things, yeah. or you can say, you know, thank you, God, that there's an answer for this issue yeah. that I'm mm-hmm. dealing with. A good attitude is so, so, so important. Mm-hmm. You know, we hear that little phrase, your attitude determines your altitude, but it really is right. A good attitude really determines how far you're going to go in life, and it determines your joy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it even determines how many friends you're going to have and what kind of friends you're going to have. Nobody wants to be around somebody that's just negative all the time and just always sour about everything. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't do any good. Mm-hmm. You know, I had breast cancer 30 years ago and yeah. I had to have a mastectomy, and I was preaching with drains coming out of my body. You know, it's just like, I, of course, I'm mm-hmm. pretty bullheaded and aggressive. and uh, But I think you, you have to have some aggression yeah. to get through life, especially the way things are today. You know, it's, mm-hmm. very, it's very easy to give up. It doesn't take any special talent to give up. Anybody mm-hmm. can do that. But it, mm-hmm. to, to press through things, and anytime you press through you will come out on the other side better off than you were when you went in. Yeah. I think it's so important, though, like for people that are watching, because I know even for me, I love to surround myself with people that are doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like at an early age, I knew that I know that I have there's a purpose in my life. Like Mm -hmm. there's God has called me to do something, Mm -hmm. something not little, something big. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I. I knew if I stayed in my little circle of people that had small minds and everyone was, mm-hmm. when they got a diagnosis or when they got, they, you know, just fell apart, mm-hmm. then I knew that I would stay in that mindset, that mm-hmm. small mindset. So like the, the importance of putting people around you that are doing better than you is is something that I think a lot of younger people need to really grasp onto. Yeah, like, all I, of us. I, we I, need yeah, inspiration. Like, I, we, need, we need someone that... 
I like to surround myself with people that are doing what, I, what not what I want to do, but doing like great things that right. are following their purpose. And so that I just want to say thank you to you because I've seen you go through so many things and I've like you, you never complain about it. And mm-hmm. you kind of like big things. I was just watching one of the episodes that we had done before and, and you were talking about, yeah, I have to have cataract surgery. And you just kind of like, and you just like <laughs> shrug yeah, your shoulder. I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's it, because a lot of times people believe that because you do what you do, that, that you it, don't have any problems. That you don't have any problems. Yeah. Like, it's like, no, problems still come. Actually, like, sometimes you have more because the devil hates you and he comes yeah. after you and tries to. Mm-hmm. I think different people, too, have different areas of life where the enemy attacks them. Yes. For me, it's always been physical stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, somebody else, it might be financial or somebody else, it might be their marriage, you know, sure. that the enemy will come after. But uh, for me, it's always been physical, but it's never. Hmm. God always gives me the grace. Mm -hmm. It's like Paul and his thorn in the flesh. God said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Mm -hmm. And so who knows? I don't know know why I've gone through as many physical things as I have. I know it doesn't mean that I don't have any faith because you have to have faith to go through those things. And it's... I told the Lord one time, I feel like I'm put together with spit and glue. It's like, <laughs> 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 a little duct tape, you can do wonderful just, things. Just a little crazy glue. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it on time. Oh, man. But I, I, I work out with a trainer still three days a week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm doing conferences. That's some strong glue. That is. Doing yeah. really, right? some some really good on TV. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you're talking about like how I face things. And one of the things that I've learned is... If you take life one day at a time, mm-hmm. you can pretty much handle anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because God only gives you grace one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just like He gave the Israelites the manna one day at a time. Mm-hmm. And if they good. tried to gather more, it would stink and mm-hmm. get rotten. And so it's kind of amusing. Some people say, you know, my life stinks. Well, maybe it's because you're trying to gather tomorrow's manna <laughs> yeah. today. You know, yeah, you can't. Yeah. And i that's something that I was not able to do in the earlier years of my life. I wanted to have everything figured out. Mm. And, and I'm still a planner, but I, you know, I've got some things coming up in the future. I need to have a sinus surgery in December. And, you know, we hadn't got to my nose. My nose, had never, <laughs> my nose had never been worked on, so now we're going to get to that. And, uh, <laughs> So, but you know what? It's like I always end up better off, and I'm I'm not going to worry about it till yeah. that day in December comes, and then I'll go. And they said you can't sneeze for two days, you can't do this and that. And I thought, How do you no, not sneeze? I don't know, but I guess I'll just. Oh my goodness! Get all the, get all the feathers and everything away. I'll see what happens. Get it all out. <laughs> if, I ha- of them. if I have to Stop sneeze, I guess I'll try to do it through my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be rough for the glue, but... Get to need some tissues around. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, people get... They get so afraid when something's wrong, and it just... You can do whatever you need to do through Christ, who is your strength, Mm -hmm. especially if you keep a good attitude about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really... It's our bad attitudes that make it 100% Mm -hmm. worse So what 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 happens when you wake up... Not feeling good, that bad attitude's creeping in because it happens to all of us. So, how do you turn that around so you don't sit in that all day long? Well, for me, a lot of times I'll just, first of all, I've learned if I really don't feel good, I'm kind of better off if I'm not around a ton of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You because know yourself. Yeah. I might not be as pleasant as I should be. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've learned to, sometimes for me, it's helpful if I just like work on a message or work on a book, Yeah. you know, something to put my mind into other than just how I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And I do have days when I don't feel good and there's really no particular reason for it. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel good. But mm-hmm. Dave has taught me, because he's this way, he's like, if I don't feel good, I don't worry about it. I just rest. Hmm. And that's... You know, it's it's all of us trying to figure everything yeah, out yeah. <laughs> that makes it so bad. It's like, how simple is that, you know? Right. I have uh, a really important question I'd like to ask you. If you could look back in in your years, which decade did 
did this stuff make sense to you? Like, did it start clicking? At what point did it click? Yeah, at what point did it click where it's, it's just not worth worrying about? Like, how many more years do I need to go to be like you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask it this yeah. way. Yeah. Let's what I mean is, how much time for Aaron? Well, <laughs> it comes gradually in certain things, but mm -hmm. you're probably not going to like my answer. Great. But Appreciate your honesty. I would say that <laughs> probably in the last 10 years has been the best. So There's that means so that many left 70. to go. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. You're double see, my age. <laughs> that actually gives me hope, though. But see, when I was like in my mid-60s, mm -hmm. I was still going out of the country three times a year, mm -hmm. three weeks at a time, going overseas, jet lag, doing all, you know, all this stuff. And so I, God has given me supernatural strength yeah. and energy yeah, yeah. Absolutely. to do what he's called me to do. Mm -hmm. And like even things like when, when I, it was interesting because when it was time for me to stop going out of the country, I didn't want to stop because I loved those mission trips. Yeah. But I mean, nothing worked out. <laughs> I mean, it was just like it. it hmm. I would have had to have been just plain stupid to not see that God was closing the door. Yeah, that's and true. And he didn't. God just me. started making it happen. I yeah. mean, our permits would get pulled at the last minute. Wow. I d Just different things would happen, you know, mm -hmm. and we just couldn't. And before everything worked out, I mean, we had mm -hmm. such favor that it was amazing. We'd get into places that nobody else had been able to get into and do wow. things. But see, the good thing for me and I really thank God for this, is because I have a media ministry mm -hmm. and there's so many media outlets today, the devil can't keep me out of anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really true. I can't physically go to India, yep. but I'm on television there mm -hmm. every day that's in 30-some-odd languages. And so um, you, you have to be ready for change. The statement that I heard that really blessed me is, Anybody who thinks they can always do what they've always done is a fool. Wow, that's so good. Mm -hmm. And you just, everybody has mm -hmm. to be ready. And I, I, I kind of feel like it comes in decades. Mm -hmm. It seems like every decade you'll notice a change. Sure. And I don't know if it's mentally because, I don't know, somehow 58 or 59 doesn't sound as old as 60. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know. Ouch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why'd you pick that one? <laughs> but she didn't say it was old. It was just older than 59. <laughs> the first thing that I can ever remember that, that kind of bothered me was when I had to go sign up for Medicare. Mm. Mm. I can see why that one can hit different. AARP. I thought, <laughs> I, you start getting that AARP stuff at 55, but... Um, 65, I thought, I'm going to the Medicare office. And it just didn't seem realistic. It was right. like, yeah, yeah, you know, I got a Medicare card. What am I doing you know, here? What am I, what am I doing? And Don't they know you're you only still 25? Feel 30, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. And then... You know, then I don't... Maybe 75, it was like, wow, I'm 75. Now, you know, I can't believe I'm 80. It's like, <laughs> I don't... I, I just... That's why I say stuff like, Boy, all the clothes in there were for old people. <laughs> you know? Or Dave will say, look at that old guy and the way he's driving. And I'm like, he's probably younger than you are, Dave. <laughs> but that's good. It's good if you don't if you don't sit around and think, oh, I'm 80 and I yep. can't do anything anymore. Yeah. And so it's going to be interesting to me mm -hmm. to see what all God lets me do before He's finished with me here. Yeah. <laughs> I love hearing that because it's just a reminder that none of us are finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because right. sometimes we think we're finished at so many different times in our yeah. life. It's like, I didn't get this job I wanted. I'm I'm just done. My career yeah. is over. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, my marriage is yeah. now not what it yeah. was. And so it's over for me. Or yeah. I'm turning whatever age. Yeah. I've missed the opportunities. And you see God opening doors still for you mm -hmm. every right. day. Well, and, and the other good thing is, you know, God has provided some wonderful people to help me. I just had to be willing to let go of some things. Mm, that's, that's hard. Good. You know, Ginger's one of those people. She helps me a lot mm -hmm. in the conferences and just a lot of the things that I used to do. She does sure. the missions trips now, and sometimes it's a little hard not to be a little jealous when she gets to go and I can't. But, 
I get over it real quick because mm-hmm. I remember jet lag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the day will come when she won't be able to go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people always ask, well, what's going to happen to the ministry when you're no longer here? We have got a longevity plan. We, this ministry is not going to stop. We're mm-hmm. going to keep my teaching on, you know. I mean, Dave listened to one guy on the radio for 20 years and didn't know he was dead. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't have to stop. Yeah. And we're going to do just as much in missions, probably more, because mm-hmm. it will become, you know, maybe even more so a missions organization. And uh, God can do anything that He wants to do. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to get to hear some of your teachings from years ago, <laughs> and still I'm getting so much out of them. It's still so applicable then as it is now, and that just shows God's faithfulness in your life and His, like you're saying, His word is the true, no matter when it's spoken. Right. So that it's cool to see what He's done in your life like that. Yeah, yeah it's so encouraging too to see because I was talking earlier um, about how a lot of young people like that are mm-hmm. in their 20s mm-hmm. are really stressing out about reaching 30. And a, a lot of them feel like that they've lost so much time, even from like COVID and things like that, like yeah. over the past few years. And they really are stressing out about it. And I think about things even with me, like I had to, I told Ginger earlier, I'm like, I've had some like real mature things I've had to do. Like, <laughs> I have to have a colonoscopy. <laughs> You are a grown up now. <laughs> One of our camera guys did his face like this. I saw you. He's like, mm. <laughs> I had to have a colonoscopy and I had to have a mammogram. Oh. I was just like, what is going on? Wow, like, you are really getting up there, girl. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> and I'm just like, those are big girl things. I know. I said in that office, like, look, I'm like, I could, I'm your child. Why am I in here? Like, I just, it's, it's just like, how did I even get here in that pressure of it? And I was like dreading it. And even like something recently, I told Ginger too, like I found like like a small like little mass uh, uh-huh. under my arm at, uh-huh. at the mammogram, and so I have I still have to get a biopsy, and that stuff's scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like I'm I'm so encouraged because I know you know you one and day Ginger at a time. one day at a time, yeah. like not to mm-hmm. n- not to like stress over it because yeah. it does if it, when it hits it all at once. Like I was on a trip, li- literally like. Um, a week ago and I ended up having to stay longer than I was supposed to stay and I missed my my hair appointment to cover up my gray hair. Oh, <laughs> no. That was serious. So, like, I don't like that. Yeah, because, poor baby. But, well, because, like, these are called baby hairs. In the black I community, we just... love to call these black our baby hairs, okay? <laughs> and they are, they don't look baby hairy when they're gray. <laughs> <laughs> They look like old lady hairs. <laughs> and so I really had a moment. I'm like, I got to get out of here. I got to go home. First thing I did, I took those braids did down. You? That's why you asked why I didn't have those braids. That's why. Because I had a meltdown because all my baby hairs had like gray right. hair in it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm like, I got to color this out. Immediately. I just got out my paint this morning and just, you, you have know. a pen? Oh, I've got this stuff. Oh, there this. are so many secret things we can share with you. I need to you. know about this stuff. I've got I, this brush stuff. You just brush it in and yeah. it just... Oh, wow. There's even a great down. little spray can. Hours. I took them down. I was like, I don't care. I have to color this. So I don't know what I'm doing. I went to the, I went to the beauty spot. I was like, I need to cover this stat. So I did it myself, but I took all those braids down. But I was saying that stuff can be, like, yeah. when you say it hits yeah. you out of no, it's like, especially after you've had, like for me. Oh yeah. Some people yeah. get depressed when they see the first gray hair. Oh my goodness. You know, it's I like pe- people get. People get depressed because they're getting older, and you know it's not. You're not going to stop it. It's going to no. keep happening. You know, yeah. It's going to keep happening, year after year <laughs> after year. You know, we we were talking about something yesterday that took place 14 years ago <laughs> that we're still dealing with the results of, and somebody said, "I cannot believe that's been 14 years." And so, you know, I have a grandson that's. Well, I mean, I've got one that's 30, but, you know, one of Danny's boys is going to be 15. He's going to be getting wow. his driving permit, and it's just like, Travis is going to be 15? Yeah, how does it happen? Uh-huh. Yeah. It just doesn't, you know, wow. seem like it can hardly happen. And no. uh, well, let, me, let me ask you this, because I think this is important for all of us at whatever stage we're in in our life. When you look back— at what God has done and still what He will do. What do you see as a life well lived? Mm-hmm. Like, what is a good goal for all of us to reach toward? Well, the Bible says in Romans fourteen seventeen, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, 
And I kind of changed that into stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's not having a big house and having your name on an office door and, you know, climbing the corporate ladder. It's that, that's, that's really not what the kingdom of God is about. That's what the world is about. Mm -hmm. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy Mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. So righteousness, having a knowing that you're made right with God through the blood of Christ and having that relaxing, comfortable relationship with God. Yeah. You know? What I mean, a wonderful I, thing. I love to spend time with God, and I just feel like I've got on my most comfy jammy, yeah. jammy jammies, jammies, <laughs> and uh, I'm comfortable with God. Yeah. Yeah. And I spent so many years being afraid He wasn't pleased with me and, you know, in works of the flesh, feeling guilty about every little thing I did wrong. And you have to have that before you can have peace. Yeah. And you have to have peace before you can have joy. Mm-hmm. And even like peace, you have to like yourself. You have to have peace with yourself yeah. before you can have peace with anybody else. Mm-hmm. So I think a lifetime goal is really wrapped up in that. And, and just contentment. Yeah. You know, I, I wrote in my journal the other day, I'm content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, to me, we call our TV program Enjoying Everyday Life. But I, I like to stress for people the every day. Yeah. You know, because every day is very ordinary. It is. And anybody can enjoy a vacation. Mm-hmm. You can enjoy getting a new outfit or a new car. But hmm. you have to have a right relationship with God to just enjoy mm-hmm. Monday, yep. Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, mm-hmm. Thursday, mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and oops, it's Monday again. <laughs> yeah. So Monday. it's... Um, uh, to me, just to be content and to be happy and to trust God, to know that, you know, He's got you. Like, you, you're talking about finding that little lump. You know, I when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I mean, that's a scary, yeah. Yeah. scary Absolutely. thing. And yet, God took such good care of me. I mean, the radiologist that found the tumor I had, they said it was so tiny that it's a miracle that he found it, but it was a very fast-growing type of cancer. And he said if he wouldn't have found it by the time you got your next mammogram, it would have probably been really big and might have. Wow. So it did not get to my lymph nodes. They took my lymph nodes. I didn't have to have any chemo, no radiation, wow. and I have now had like 32 clear mammograms wow. nice. and yeah. no problem, yeah. no problem. So sometimes the things that seem the scariest. Right. Now, I know that's not everybody's story, right. and I know there are plenty of people that, have not made it through cancer. And, and I hope this doesn't sound wrong to people, especially people who've lost loved ones. Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. And if you really, if you really believe in heaven, I mean, if you really believe in heaven, and mm-hmm. I do, how can you be afraid mm-hmm. of leaving this place? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's really, when we grieve for people, we're not we're not grieving for their loss, we're grieving for our loss. Yeah. Because anybody who is a believer and goes to heaven, they really are in a much better place right. Right. Sure. than they were. I was Dave and I were talking the other day. I said, Can you imagine just what the atmosphere of heaven is gonna oh. be like? Where there's everybody loves everybody. Mm-hmm. There's no no sin, no hatred. I mean we can't we can't even fathom you know, we feel all the junk in the world just in the atmosphere that we live in. Yeah. It's amazing to think of, really. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Kind of beyond imagination. It is. Yeah. Yeah. How would you encourage someone to stand on the faithfulness of God? You've got 80 years behind you of seeing really difficult things mm-hmm. and God work in amazing ways. Right. So, how do you encourage them to stand on the faithfulness of God when they're not seeing? the results of that faithfulness that faithfulness yet. And I understand that. You know, I mean, I, I could go back to way back when I felt like God wanted me to quit my job so I could stay home and study because I felt like God was calling me to this worldwide teaching ministry, and I'd mm-hmm. never been anywhere, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it, it could have been my imagination as much as it could have been God. But, you know, when God puts something in your heart, you just can't get rid of it. Yeah. 
And so I made this big sacrifice and quit my job. Well, first I quit my job, and then I got a part-time job, which I always am amused about because I had part-time obedience. <laughs> <laughs> and I got fired from that job, which I was not the kind of person that got fired. Right. And so it's kind of funny that I... God said, quit your job, and I did, but got a part-time job. <laughs> See, I always wanted a backup plan. Yep. So I thought because I made this big sacrifice that, boy, God was just going to pour on the finances, and we were going to have more than ever. And for six years, I mean, I had to get my kids clothes at garage sales, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, I had so much money every two weeks for groceries, and mm -hmm. I couldn't go, I mean, a dollar over it. I mean, we were tight, tight, tight. Matter of fact— we were $40 short every month of paying our bills. Mm. But every month we had a miracle. Mm. And that was where I, I think that I first started learning how to have faith. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was in a conference a couple of weeks ago, and I got out one of my old notebooks from 1983 where I had written down my prayer list of things that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I had on there a skillet and mm -hmm. washcloths wow. and things like that. And one day, I, I'm telling you the truth, I had I needed 12 new dish rags, and a lady hmm. rang my doorbell and said, I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but I felt like God told me to bring you 12 wow. dish cloths. Wow. And I was like, ah! yeah. <laughs> that was God. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but those things, they're precious to me yeah, I'll bet. when I look back. And so in answer to your question, I, I think, once again, you, you have to go through things, and yeah. I went through things. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about the end of my story, but hmm. I went through a lot to get to where I'm at. And so mm -hmm. I guess the thing I would say if I was to sum it up is don't give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's easy to give up. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, the Bible says if, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Yeah. It's not. You're nothing special if you give up, mm -hmm. but if you can say, I'm going to trust God through this, yeah. and I finally got to the point where I just told God, I said, I don't care if we never have any more money than what we have. I'm going to keep tithing and giving and doing what you tell me to do, mm -hmm. and it was almost like that was a breaking point, and after that, we started to have increase mm -hmm. in our life. You, you have to make your mind up that you're going to do what's right because it's right not just to get God to do something for you. Yeah. That's a huge that lesson. Is. So mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Well, you feel like a cupcake? We've got some birthday cupcakes <laughs> for I, you, some I flowers. I keep looking at those, but I, I, smell them for you. I am not getting that icing all over my face on TV. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll get them after the cameras turn off. Yeah. <laughs> But they are pretty. <laughs> they are. Beautiful. Well, if you would like to have a birthday gift for Joyce as well, there is nothing that she loves more than to share the Word of God and yes. to help other people. So if you would like to make a donation to Joyce Meyer Ministries in honor of Joyce's birthday, and we're just going to say this like she's not here listening because it makes her very uncomfortable, but that's okay. Because... <laughs> that's okay if you're uncomfortable. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know how much you love her, but more than that, we know how much you love the Lord and yeah. want to do something something for him. Yeah. So you can go to joycemeyer.org slash donate if you would like to do something for Joyce's birthday. Um, you know, one of the best things you can do is just pray for her and pray yeah. for the ministry. That's a wonderful gift too. And we thank you all very much for being here with us. Joyce, we love you so much. Thank you. Yes, we'll do we this again when I'm 90. Oh. Yes, we will. Oh. That's a date. What will you be? You're an What's your octillion? I don't know what comes Nine, after that. A nineteenagenarian. What is a hundred? I had a grandfather that lived to be a hundred and two. It's your centennial birthday. A centennial. Ooh, that sounds ooh. exciting. I make t-shirts for that one. <laughs> Wait, All right, you like heard it. There are going to be t-shirts yeah. right here in 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> we will see you all then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out is a wonderful place. Go there to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.